and the recording started. So good evening, everyone. Good afternoon or good morning, depending on where you are on this planet. Uh, this is Ali Azzedine from Four Generation for Education. Uh, Krishna, she's attending or he's attending the third session for today. I've been in session number six and we still have one more. Uh, so I'm so excited to have you all and uh, make sure you are clicking on all panelists and attendees and uh, she for Krishna hello Krishna hello Christine hello everyone I'm going to share with David where are you located and what is your role and then we will give it a start and uh, so uh, 57 are based in Asia more people are in America so it's the beginning of the day for them I'm losing my attendees from South America. I'm not sure unless they didn't vote. So if someone is attending from South America, let us know. We had people from Colombia, David, during the day. Uh, the number from Europe increased. We have 21% in Europe. The Middle East is 12. And then some people are watching. It's their midnight in Australia. I'm not sure. And again, Isabel is still here from Colombia. Hello, Isabel. Let me know what time is it now in Colombia? And who's attending from Australia? Africa, 9%. And here in Africa, I think we have people from Ghana. We have people from uh, Egypt. 62% uh, are teachers. 13% uh, are coordinators, or they play a role in the leadership team. They are 15%. And then, David, we have 16%. They are additional language teachers. It's 7 in the morning, 7.30 a.m. in the morning in Colombia. Hello, hello again. And then hello from Dubai, uh, India, uh, Bangladesh, and uh, where else? So plenty of countries and plenty of teachers joining us, David. 59% uh, they plan conceptual unit. 15% they don't plan it. And then 26%, they do it sometimes. So hopefully by the end of this session, we will make that task for you much easier with all the examples and the thinking that David will be sharing with us. And you will find it an interesting session. Uh, some people are attending now from Canada, Portugal, uh, Philippines, Saudi Arabia. So it's really the whole planet, David. Let us know more about you. We've been working together for a long time, but in the two different programs of the IB, me as a PYP workshop leader and you as an MYP one. So let's know about you. And I know you're based in Dubai, so we are in the same country and uh, uh, sharing together online your experience with all our attendees. Go ahead, David. Thank you, Ali. Well, good good afternoon for me. I don't know if for some of you it was going to be good morning or, or good evening. The Australian person, then thank you very much for being present from so far away. Uh, uh, it's impressive to have all these participants from all over the world, and it's a lot of pressure, by the way. <laughs> Buenos dias a la persona de Colombia. Buenos dias. Um, so welcome, welcome to these concepts in additional language class. Um, just just to 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 introduce myself. So I was born in, in Mallorca, a beautiful island in the middle of the Mediterranean in, in Spain, but I I've been living in Dubai for the last year and a half. I have worked in the world of education for more than 25 years in different countries, in Spain, in France, in the US, in Switzerland for eight years as um, academic head of secondary in Ivy School. And right now I work in, in, in a school in Dubai. I'm the head of learning and teaching at Jumeirah Baccalaureate. Um, I don't know to what extent it's important, but I have a bachelor's degree in history, so my background in history, but I've done a master's degree in teaching Spanish as a foreign language, and I've always had the pleasure to teach language as a, as a way to communicate, and I consider that teachers are language teachers, whatever they teach, and I'm right now finishing my PhD in interdisciplinarity in, in secondary. So a real pleasure to be here with, with all of you. Stop, stop talking about me. Uh, uh, let's move on. And uh, what we're going to do, hopefully, during this session, uh, we're going to try to discover how, in additional language learners, um, learners need to make their own meanings. So we're going to try to discuss about conceptual interactions. We're going to discuss what, what does it mean, a concept-based instruction, even if, to be honest, I've been this morning in a few sessions, and I know that if you've been there, this has been clarified many, many times. But just in case, for the one that we're in present, we're going to discuss a little bit about that. We're going to try to use concepts as a tool for understanding in language acquisition lessons. 
And then we're going to see how do you overcome the situation that students have a tendency, isn't it, to rely on simplistic explanations of grammatical rules. So how can we overcome the situation of these traditional language acquisition lessons where teaching was pretty much based on uh, rules, grammar, who does remember long ago, you know, the irregular verbs in English and memorize this list of irregular verbs. And then after that, going home and thinking, do I really need that to communicate? So let's discuss about that for the next, for the next minute. So the first thing I'm going to ask you to do is, do you mind the chat? Try to answer this question in, in not, not many words, please, because Ali needs to read everything and needs to give us some feedback. So can you please discuss or put on your chat, what does it mean to learn a new language. What is it for you? So, Katina is saying taking a risk, uh, being an inquirer, it's a new tool. It will allow us to enter a new whole world uh, to be able to communicate. Again, the communication coming uh, many times to make connection. Um, it's a challenge to learn and to discover a new culture, to be open minded. Uh, it's an opportunity to acquire a new language with different culture. Uh, open minded is coming again uh, to be able to communicate again. Uh, so those are some of the ideas coming in that chat, David. And just let me make sure, is your microphone connected to your headphones, right? Yes. Okay, so just make sure it's near to your uh, uh, maybe. mouth, maybe, because like uh, sometimes when you are moving, we are, uh, we are losing a little bit the sound. So I want to make sure that everyone is listening to you uh, clearly. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. I hope it's better now. I won't move that much. So I can guess that lots of IB educators around there, because I've heard open-minded, restakers, inquirers. So that's good. Uh, so many IB, IB participants, but we're going to try to present that in a different perspective and not focusing only on IB programs. Okay, so thank you very much for those points. I, I agree with all of you basically, but let's, let's take a, this, this, this sentence and let's discuss about that. So uh, learning a new language, it says, is not just acquiring an, a linguistic object, it's about a cultural, social, and psychological mediation. And I've written three words in three different colors because I think it's extremely important that we realize that learning a language, it's moving into a more cultural communication process where we try to interact with each other. So sometimes what students are looking at is to the ability to communicate more than the ability of being perfect, being exact, being explicit, is the capacity they have to communicate and to socially interact. So I think that's an important aspect that we need to look at when we talk about language acquisition or language learners. More definitions about language development. The sentence that I take from Mr. Halliday is the fact that language development is a continuous process. Now, if you have the time in the chat just to write what will go on and try to explain what does it mean for you, a continuous process. Okay, so just write a couple of things and every time Ali sees an interesting sentence, he will share it with us, All right? So let's move on. What are we looking for? What are the aspects that we're looking for in um, language acquisition classes? Most of us teach in secondary, some of us in primary, but what's important for us to understand is who do we have in our classrooms? Who are these young teenagers that we have in front of us? And as you know, they're called Generation Z. So we need to adapt to them and not the other way around. It shouldn't be them adapting to our way of teaching. We should be the ones trying the meaning, trying the, the coherent and the real life situation into our classrooms. Because basically we have students who are online on a daily basis. We have technological savvy students. And what they're looking at in the lessons, it's connected, coherent and meaningful learning which means something that makes sense to them, something that they realize they can use it on their own behalf, and that will make them better communicators, and they will allow them to communicate and to interact. At the same time, we're going to try to build this interest they have in questioning. What is the importance of inquiring or constantly asking questions, and through the question, developing their understanding and their learning process? And at the same time, what we want is to bring transdisciplinary or maybe even interdisciplinary connections in our classrooms. More, more in, in particular, if we talk about language, language is probably the, the glue, what makes it all together, what makes this learning process together across the subjects. So I would like you to keep in mind these three big aspects, 
a meaningful learning process, which is based on inquiry, on questions, and which is able to link the knowledge and the aspect related to many different disciplines or many subjects. This is extremely interesting. Have you ever imagined Ali, anything from you? It, it seems yes, like we need something. you to, to speak louder. Good, you were able to read my, <laughs> my <Yes>. physical <laughs> or facial expression, okay? Okay, I will speak louder then. Um, yes. So what we're trying to do basically, have you ever imagined the capacity you have to answer problems or to solve problems using one only discipline, one only subject? It's almost impossible. So let's try to use the language as the glue that connects all these different subjects and that brings real life situation in our classrooms. So what we're going to do, we're going to go very quickly through what a concept is. I'm pretty sure that most of you, the majority of you will be able to define what a concept is. And I was just going to try to spend five, six minutes discussing about it. But after looking at the previous presentations from my colleagues, there's no point of me to spend more time on how do we define a concept. In any case, the colors, the, the words in colors are the ones that I would like you to keep in mind. A concept is timeless, is universal, is abstract, and is represented by one or two words. And this is going to be our focus on the learning teaching or the teaching the learning languages through a concept-based approach. Once we have that, let's try to define what is a concept-based instruction. And we're going to go now through, oh, sorry, through a little bit of theory, and believe me, we're going to come up with some proposals, some ideas, which we'll be able to discuss and see how useful and how meaningful can they be for you. Basically, in the presentation, every time you will see something in different color, these are the intentions and the big ideas that I want to share with you. So concept-based instruction is basically driven by big ideas. So we're getting away from subject-specific content, we're moving away from subject-specific aspects, and we're moving into something that can be transferable. Big ideas, big concepts that can work for many, many subjects. What we want is students to understand that there's a context in the learning process. And this context, the important thing is that it brings meaning, it's meaningful to them, it's purposeful. And if we think about what is meaningful to us, we're going to probably answer that is anything which is related to our real world, something that we can get and we know we can use for our own benefit in real world and real life situations. So the proposals of conceptual teaching are going to be around all the time, how can we bring real life into our classrooms and into the planning of our units? And I would like you to also keep this in mind every time we're going to go through the different examples that we'll propose to you later on, is keep in mind, is this example something that I can bring to a real life aspect? Is it something useful or the sources that I'm going to, to use being related to these real life aspects? Because what we want is the students not only to learn, but to understand, to know, and to be able to apply in their lives. Because as probably you agree with me, and if you don't, please let us know through the chat. The best way to learn is to put in practice, to use, to be able to use what we've learned into our lives. This is what we're going to try to look at in the different examples that we're going to bring. Yeah, so I'm not going to talk about Miss Erickson and uh, the factual, the, the skills, the concepts and the principles, but I'm going to use her proposals to just go through the different examples that we're going to go through. So this is the first one. What we're going to try to understand is bring an example where you have here on the left, the main structure of the concept-based planning of a unit. And on the right-hand side, what I've tried to do is try to bring an example when we adapt this structure to a language acquisition classroom. Some of you might ask, if we plan a lesson, should we start by the facts? Should we start by the topic? Should we start the lesson by the concept when we plan it? Or should we just start directly by the principle of generalization? I'm going to give you two minutes and I would like you to write on the chat, where do you think we should start when we want to plan a concept-based unit? So two minutes, quick word, concept, topic, or principles. 
So you are going to get, uh, you're, you're getting uh, both answers. Some people are saying principles, topics, uh, facts, um, and again, concepts. It's coming from, from all the direction. Uh, it depends. Uh, again, I, I, I would like to hear your answer, David, and to check, do we have a right answer to this question? Oh, yeah. Ali, just say the right answer, which is, I'm sorry, I cannot help you. <laughs> it will depend on each one of you. Uh, however you feel comfortable with. When we plan, we can plan backwards. We can start with one thing or the other. It would all depend on how comfortable you are. My advice would be to think of something that you would like, it will motivate your students, something that you consider will be interesting for them. And based on that principle, then we will start planning. What I'm going to do is start planning from the topic. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, my experience is that I have a group of students who are very much interested in traveling. They come from different places around the world and it's a good possibility for them to talk and to explain aspects about their own countries. So the interactions are probably much better across the whole class. So I'm going to start this example by using the topic. My topic is to discuss about travel. And when you start planning, you can discuss about many things related to travel. Travel is a wide aspect that can be approached from different perspectives. So this is why the concepts come in. The concepts will give you the right approach to the topic. And depending on the concept you use, you're going to address the topic in one way or the other. And these are some examples. Imagine I want to approach travel through the, context of, the concepts of point of view or creativity. Why? Because basically, uh, my experience is that when you travel to different places, you get new points of view about cultures, about traditions, about beliefs, about different aspects. And this aspect of traveling is the one that sparks that interest you have on points of view. At the same time, these points of view can develop certain aspects of your creativity, in particular, if you, are, if you like art, if you like history, if you like archeology. span However, if you approach the concept of travel through different concepts like audience, and purpose, then all of a sudden you're approaching the concept of travel or the idea of traveling, the topic of traveling in from a different perspective. Because one of the points that we're going to discuss is travel journals, writing conventions, travel magazines, travel blogs, text types, and writing conventions. Why that? Because the sources that I'm going to use for my lessons are pretty much based on journals, writing aspects, magazines, blogs, and different written texts related to travel. So basically I have my big idea, my big topic, which is going to be travel. I've thought about the different resources that I want to use. I want to use blogs, I want to use videos, I want to use magazines because I have them or because I feel comfortable with them. And through the facts that I'm going to use, I'm going to develop my topic by using certain concepts. And by putting this all together, I'm going to be able to create my principal generalization, which I started by calling it that the students understand that. If I start that sentence, I know what my objective is. My objective is that my students will understand a principle. And this principle, and you have the two principles that I propose here. Don't worry, you'll create your own later on. These two principles are based on the concepts that I propose. Now, I'm sure you can imagine we can use other concepts. And depending on the concept we use, the approach to our topic will be different. If there's any question, feel free to write it on the chat. If there's no question from Ali, I'll keep going. Uh, so I'm going to mention, David, that uh, generalization is the language of Lynn Erickson in the PYP. If you are a PYP teacher, we call it central idea. If you are an MYP teacher, you call it statement of inquiry. So some people, they call it a big idea. And this is really the deep understanding that we would like the student to, uh, to leave with. 
and it's a kind of a timeless and universal because as you know those uh, generalization are conceptual now for the people who are asking about the certificate i'm going to explain all this at the end of the session so i'm not going to take a uh, time from david and uh let me also say, David, about this idea, do we start from the fact topic and we go up or do we start from up and we go down? It also, depending on your country, depending on your Ministry of Education, depending on your textbook, if you have some requirements or you are obliged to do certain things, uh, we explained also this previously that uh, we can go from down to top or from top to down and then i think the idea of david also looking at the interest of your student is a great point to be taken into consideration right absolutely thank you ali i didn't mention any pyp or myp specific words but ali is absolutely right it's always important to clarify to all of us absolutely um, and by the yeah, way, especially for our uh, attendees who are exploring for the first time concept-based curriculum, they need to know that we use different terminology depending on our background. Of course. And by the way, for the certificate, you'll have to pass a test. Sorry for telling you this. So we'll, we'll see that. <laughs> so let's, <laughs> let's move on. Let's move on. So let's take this unit, okay, this proposal of a unit based on travel, and we're going to try to go step by step and see how can we approach that unit and what the reason why we're going to propose the activities that we're going to propose. And please feel free to propose new perspectives. It's always good because at the end, we all learn from each other. So when we talk about um, theory, about experiences in lessons, uh, two very important authors, Piaget and Vygotsky, um, they, they said that if we want to learn what we learn must be tangible, concrete, and must be based on social interactions and social experiences. So what we're going to do is try to bring the experiences of the students in this activity on traveling by making it meaningful to them. So we're going to invite them to go through what we call an experiential learning process. So what we want to do is we want the students to explore. And exploring means different sources, using their own experience. And through this exploration that can go through, again, readings or personal experiences traveled, we want them to connect these experiences together. Through this connection, we're going to ask the students to create, to produce something. And hopefully this production is going to be a task or an assessment that is going to be related to something tangible, something concrete, something that brings the idea of a hands-on experience. So what we're going to create, we're going to share that as a group. And then as always, the process of, the process that happens naturally after every production, every, crea every creation is a reflection on how was it? Can we do it differently? Can we do it better? And this reflection can happen in different ways. So the first step in this unit, and why am I using these Michael Palin examples? I, I love Michael Palin, not only because he was one of the big uh, comedians, British comedians, but also because he moved into producing videos when he's traveling all over the world in very interesting places. So. The central idea or the principle of generalization, or if you're a PYP or an MYP teacher, you will use the, 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 the different words that are used for the IB programs, are created by the teacher. But I'm just thinking, what about if this central idea is created with your students? What about proposing to your students the topic? What about proposing to them through a discussion the possibility to create their own central idea, to bring their own concepts if they want to discuss about travel. If we do this, what we're going to do is we're going to transfer the ownership of the unit to our own students. And theoretically, we are going to increase their engagement and their motivation. So what we're going to do as this first step, we're going to run certain videos and we're going to also bring some travel magazines or different articles. And we're going to give the students the time to cultivate their curiosity, 
what is it about traveling? How does it look like a travel blog or a travel diary? Um, do they all look alike? Are there some written conventions that appear in all the magazines? What kind of a language, what kind of an expressions is Michael Palling using in, is using in these videos? And then we're going to try to build into the class inquiry, questioning. This questioning is going to help the students to build up their understanding of the unit and to build up their different language experiences. Maybe some questions that we can propose. How did people travel in the past? Um, how people write about travels in the past? And how do people research about trips? How do we plan a trip? What's interesting from every trip? What's interesting from every destination? So the first step is going to be basically to bring that interest and bring that real life situation into the classroom when we're going to discuss about traveling. Then what, what is very important in all conceptual based or concept based lessons, it's to create some kind of a Socratic questions. It's not a Socratic seminar per se, but it's the idea of bringing question, putting in place this inquiry cycle that is going to develop the critical thinking of the students in many purposes. However, what we need to make sure is that this inquiry cycle focus what? What do you think, and please write that in the chat, what do you think the inquiry questions should focus in the discussions with the students? The topic, the facts, the big idea, the concepts, what? Tell me. So uh, I need to remind everyone, Petina is one of them. Please, in the chat, click all panelists and attendees so that everyone can read your answers and your interaction. There is a lot of chat taking place, David, during your presentation. And then uh, uh, Shiba uh, or Siba is saying, sorry, Siba is saying like uh, questions related to facts. Some people are saying questions provoke the thinking. Uh, some people are mentioning the idea of uh, including both topic and concepts. Hello, Ksenia. Uh, inquiry questions should focus on big ideas. Uh, we are getting, again, the whole idea of provocation, getting to know the prior knowledge, uh, uh, what they wonder about. And uh, again, one more time, all the people, you should be now familiar with Zoom. So in the chat, where you see the word two, if you click in the drop down menu, you are going to see all panelists and attendees. And that's how everyone can read this amazing chat and ideas that you are sharing. Uh, Melissa is mentioning the idea of prior knowledge and misconception. Uh, Amina is is mentioning also the same. And uh, this is what do I have for you, David, for this question. Uh, it, it looks absolutely great because all the answers are, are coherent and, and I, I agree with all of you. What we want is these discussions is to go little by little. The first one, the first thing we want to do is analyze what the students know already about traveling. What do they know? Because the more we know what they know, the more we're going to be able to create that unit adapted to their needs so they can be challenged at the right level. At the same time, what we want to do is analyze the concepts that we're proposing. In this case, point of view, creativity, audience or purpose, depending on the path that you're taking. And you want to see to what extent the students are able to transfer the meaning of that concept into other situations. For example, when you discuss about point of view, what does it mean? How point of view can be related to language acquisition? How point of view can be related to the unit of travel? or how point of view can be related to other aspects. So through the inquiry cycle, what we want is to build up confidence and the students to be able to understand what's the path we're taking in our unit. So once we've done this inquiry process, once the students have been able to analyze the sources, the videos, uh, watch the videos, read certain documents that we, we used in the class, we're going to see how the concepts are going to be used to organize their learning. Because probably now through the inquiry cycle, we have different kinds of questions. We want to narrow down those questions to bring them close to what the topic is. So don't forget, we'll continue talking about um, the travel and the different perspectives that we have in this big idea. So how are we going to, to do that? This is my proposal. 
My proposal is what about using visible thinking strategies? If you're familiar with the project Zero from, from Harvard, so it's, it's, it's one of the ways that you can approach. But let's try if we can use now, narrow down our discussions to the concepts that we're going to use in that unit. So the concepts might be, let me just go back to make clarify, maybe you want to analyze these concepts that we have up here, creativity and point of view. Okay, let's pick these two. And then, sorry to go back again. Let's try to see how can we make students understand the concepts by making connections between them. Connections between the concepts and the topics that we want to analyze. These connections can be done in different ways. And here you have pictures of two different activities that were related to connecting those concepts to um, um, different objectives or related the concepts with a topic. It can be done through a simple post-it strategy where students are posting their ideas with different colors, every color is different students and try to create lines of thinking. Maybe you want to do it using these hexagonal thinking strategies where students try to find the links between concepts by put them together with different topics and different objectives. So what we've done is we've created our unit through the idea of traveling. We've created up concepts attached to this idea. We came up with different sources that will analyze different perspectives related to travel. And we want our students to understand how those concepts are not only related with the topic, but in which way they can be transferred to real life situations or their own experiences. Because what we want basically is the students to understand that through the concepts, they can bring the real world into their classrooms. So what we do is that this principle of generalization, and thank you, Ali, you call it statement of inquiry for the MYP teachers. So there it is, yes, they want to inquiry, um, is the relation between the concepts, the ones that we picked, and the context, and what we want the students to understand in which situation. And this is what we call a transferable idea. So in the principle of generalization or in the statement of inquiry, what we want is to have our concepts indicated explicitly. Because if they're not explicit, then students won't understand what is it, the important idea. So it's very important that whichever concept we approach or focus of the lessons being travel as the topic is how when how are we analyzing travel through the different concepts that we approach and i would like you to think for two seconds of the idea of traveling but bring another another concept into it culture is all of a sudden a different perspective for the one that we approach or maybe we want to bring the idea of traveling and use the concept of time, space, and place. All of a sudden, the idea of travel has another perspective for the students. So it's important that we understand that what the concept does is create the path that we're going to follow when analyzing the topic that we propose. I hope it's, it's clear in everybody's mind. So what we're going to do, and the third step of this experience, will be to create, to generate, by using the topic and the concepts, this statement of inquiry, this statement of understanding. But it's important that we build it from the concepts of the unit. And ideally, I don't know if this is possible for you students, they should be the ones proposing statements of inquiry based on their experience in your classrooms. So let me just go back for a second. I know it's something I shouldn't do, but I'll do it anyway. Um, it's if we start by the topic and then we use the facts to analyze, to resource our topic, to create the resourcing aspects, the research aspects. And then we pick our concept because this is the way we want to approach the idea of travel. Or maybe because this is the one our 
students want to approach the concept of travel because this is what they're interested in. I invite you to stop here, bring these ideas to your class, discuss with your students and tell them, okay, do you think you could come up with a big idea? Do you think you could create a statement? And again, a statement is not a question. A statement that puts together our topic with the concepts that we want to use. Do you think this is feasible? And that's a question. Have you ever done that? Can you please write in the chat if you've already tried to invite your students to create your statement of inquiry and how did that work? Let us know. You mean, oh, it, it, yeah. yeah, it seems Sean read your question before uh, sharing it, David. And Sean, he said, I have seen students as young as a grade one creating generalization based on the concept they recognize as the big idea. And so Melissa is mentioning in the exhibition only. Uh, Eva, she said, no, we don't have time. Uh, Selma talking again about the PYP exhibition. And then I would like to share with the participants in the chat a blog that I wrote a few years ago about uh, uh, the, the title of Do You Hear Their Voice? And in this blog, I mentioned, David, the whole idea of inviting the student to the collaborative planning meeting where they sit with the teacher, collaborate on the central idea, on the learning experiences. And the, let's say we were talking about agency, giving them voice choice and ownership even before uh, having this word published officially. Uh, so the article is written in Arabic and English. Make sure you are choosing the English uh, section while you are uh, reading it. And so in most of the answers, they mentioned the whole idea of in the PYP exhibition, they were able to do this. Yeah, and, and, and that's great. And, and, you know, Ali and I didn't get, I mean, it's not something that we agreed, but he wrote the article and, and we, we think the same way. It's important to give that student agency. And one of the best ways of doing it is make them feel owners of the unit and build the unit on their own interest, on their own passions. And if this means you to change your planning, this means you to amend, review, reflect on, the, on your unit, feel free. I'm absolutely sure that your coordinators and, and the members of the direction of the school will be very happy to see you reflecting. Um, I'm sorry to hear that some of you think there's no time to do it. Uh, I would like to have a discussion with you to see what do you mean by no time, but unfortunately we have no time to discuss about that in this session. But it is really a shame because basically the time is something that we should, we should build into our planning and time should be, uh, we should not adapt to the time, it should be the other way around, isn't it? And maybe by allowing the students to participate more actively, um, it will take us longer to go through a unit at the beginning, but when we build this confidence on the students to see Oh yeah, now I understand. I understand why this concept is linked to my topic because I've tried and maybe the first time it wasn't perfect, nor the second time, but I can assure you the more you try, the more you'll be surprised. And this aha moment won't come from your students. It will come from us. We will be the first one saying, I've got the aha moment when the students were able to create a statement of understanding based on what we wanted. And if they create it, I think it's very important, again, that we go back to this relation that the statement has with real life situations. I think that's crucial. Okay, so Eva, she explained a little bit for you, uh, David, that, and I think it's the scenario for many people. And this is also the whole importance of rethinking our timetables and how do we divide the time between the discipline. Eva is saying that she has one lesson per week less than 60 minutes and then she has only 10 weeks to cover a topic and here uh, yeah we need maybe to rethink about the quantity of the topics you are covering during the year and maybe think about a whole year unit of inquiry david what do you think about that i think you're absolutely right i'm going to say something out to what extent i should say that i think all schools should review their curriculums and move into a more transdisciplinary links and interdisciplinary links so moving away from subject specific timetables where students move to one class or another or from one teacher to another that that just builds 
Knowledge and if it's a concept tool, teachably specific to a subject into something much more horizontal, where students through the concepts can gain the knowledge of different experiences and different subjects. I'm sure you all realize that this concept based approach helps us tremendously to link subjects one with the other, because concepts being universal, being transferable is not something specific to mathematics, just the easiest one. Think about the concept of change. I'm sure you can think about the amount of ways we can approach the concept of change through different subjects. And how students will understand that concept will be able to take it with them and to use it, not only in their real life, in, in, in every single thing that happens daily for them. So I agree with, with the majority of the teachers that say that we should revamp uh, the timetables. Now, yeah, there's not much we can do about that, more than continue discussing about possibilities to restructure the timetables in the school so we can adapt our teaching strategies to these tendencies, which are definitely worth trying in our lessons. Um, so basically, there is a yeah. 15 minute left. I'm oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so I'm the timekeeper now. Yeah, thank uh, you very much. Thank you very much. Your unit and let's let's uh, move on. Let's check. move on. I want to remind everyone. If they have any question to David, they can send it to the Q&A and I will try to choose a few uh, that we are going to answer them before the end of the workshop. Or the yeah, so hurry up, hurry up. I'm going to run. <laughs> so uh, basically, how can we bring all these together? Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. An hour goes, <laughs> goes by, Very fast, by so quickly. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. So what we, what, how do we bring this together? The first thing, this central idea, crucial. The central idea is what do we want the students to understand? And I didn't use the word know because this is not knowledge based, it's understanding. What do we want the students to understand in terms of travel? My intention was for them to understand that travel brings different points of view, awakens our creativity uh, and brings different perspectives. That was my intention. At the same time, we're going to build, we need to have these inquiry questions that are used to answer that central idea, to give answers, to the, the conceptual answers that will help the students to improve their understanding to hit, to get to that central idea. We want to have the concepts explicitly related to a language learning context. So we're not going to go through grammatical aspects. Grammatical aspects are going to help us to bring the, the structure but the main point is to develop those concepts. We want to have an assessment, which is a performance based assessment. We want the students to produce something which is tangible and which can be measured and can be self assessed or peer assessed. And we also want the students to have the time to reflect on the topic, but in particular on the way the concepts are attached to the topic. And again, maybe inviting them, as I did with some with you during the session, what about boys and girls if we change the concept? Is it going to be different? Or are you going to see trouble from a different perspective if we bring another concept and have a debate? So the reflection can be more conceptual based at the end of the lesson. So this is my invitation. What about, not tonight, here in Dubai, we are on break, it's October break. I don't know you, so I don't want you to do any work during the break, unless you're so passionate that you think, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. So if you want to give it a go, I invite you to pick a unit, a unit that you have already planned or a unit that you have already taught. And if you've taught it in your reflection process, think about what was my topic? What did I want my students to understand from that unit? And see if you can build up a concept that will make your unit more meaningful, more purposeful. What would be the best concept for you to use to bring depth into your unit, to get away from that superficiality? And sorry, I'm not saying your units are superficial, not at all. I'm saying that we all have those units that we're not very happy with and would like to develop even further. Pick those ones and try to bring the concept to the unit and develop the same strategy that we've been developing on, on this session. Now, theoretically, I wanted you to have a discussion. I don't understand we have time. Uh, I would like you, but let's have the discussion with the next slide, okay? What I wanted to do is in which way the concept-based approach for language learners, for language acquisition, 
And we don't teach language acquisition for you. Even school leaders, they are present tonight and, and they don't teach, but maybe you want to use concept in the way you lead school. Why not? It's probably a discussion to have. How these can affect your instruction strategies and how these can affect your, the learning of your students. How are you going to have this discussion? I don't know if you know that the Bono thinking hats is a very interactive, visible thinking routine strategy that I love to do with the students and with the participants when I lead face-to-face -face workshops. I would like you to pick one of the hats, whichever color you feel closer to. The blue one is the one that makes you reflect about, okay, concept-based uh, uh, instruction is interesting, but it's challenging. And I would like to think about the challenges that I will face. If you decide to place yourself under the green hat, could you think on the excitement that brings to you on teaching conceptual based instruction? Are you excited about that and why? Maybe if you're somebody who's uh, more based on your feelings, then maybe tell us about your feelings and put your red hat on. And your feelings can be different, not only excitement, it can be nervousness, it can be worry, it can be some concerns. Maybe if you put your green hat on, you want to share with us some ideas from your experience, ideas that can make us all better teachers in this conceptual approach. Maybe if you put your white hat is, no, you know, I understand. I understand the principle and why should we all move into bringing the concepts into our lessons? And maybe, hopefully none of you, will put a black hat on, which is the most negative perspective in terms of, no, you know, I don't think this will work under my situation. But if it's the case, show it with us. So I'm going to give you, Ali, do we have three minutes to give for this? Uh, we need two. to start wrapping up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> two minutes, yes. two minutes. So very quick, two minutes. And we, what we're going to do, we're going to use those reflections into a question and answer as well. Okay, so let's try to wrap everything together. Okay. So David, um, I'm seeing that the people, they started creating subgroups. So the Hindi teacher are going to connect together. The Mandarin teacher are going to connect together. They are exchanging email. And I think if we want to repeat this session together, we would like to repeat it by asking at the beginning, uh, which language do you teach? So, uh, and make sure if you are sharing your email to make those kind of connection, uh, click all panelists and attendees so you can be, you can be in touch. Or maybe you can create a group on Facebook about additional languages and concepts. So uh, this is an idea for you. Uh, David, if you don't mind, I'm going to share my screen now. And of we'll start wrapping up with some questions. So you need to stop sharing your screen. And yes. I'm going to explain a little bit about this whole idea of the YouTube channel. So here, if you just wait for a one second in that chat, I shared with you our YouTube where you are going to find David's session and the previous session and our previous webinar. I'm going to share with you as well our website. So one more session for the day today, our special concept day across the curriculum. In half an hour from now, we are going to meet with Mihai and we are going to talk about concept in PE. I invite everyone to join, even if you are not a PE teacher. I saw that we have a yoga and dance teacher. The session will be inspiring and then you can also attend with Mihai. You are going to see also all our events for October and November. We have sessions in Arabic, in French and in English. All those are free events and you can attend for free like our day and our thematic days that we are doing. Very soon you will know and we will advertise our November day and what do we have for November. Our paid uh, certificates, so the, the David, they don't have a test for the certificate. If they would like to have a certificate, they can order it online. And this is to support us, to support our work. And so we can bring for you more inspiring speakers and we can organize more of these days. Uh, so it's only five euros. You go on the website, you click on the session that you attended, and then you can put an order and we will email you the certificate. I'm opening the website in French, but the website is also English. So you can check on the English, uh, go to the paid online, and then from the paid online you go 
And if you attended all the session of the day, you can also go on a special certificate for the whole day about concepts across the curriculum. So time to for some question, David. And uh, one of the questions that I have here, when we are playing, you can also see the question from Natasha if you open the Q&A on your computer. We plan based on a, an authentic context where action-oriented approach where the student as a social actor. It answers why we are learning this. I don't know where the concepts will fill into this planning, or maybe I don't know what constitute concepts in language, like a grammar. So if we can give them uh, some hints and tips, let me tell you to know more about concepts in additional languages, I would recommend Lois Lanning book. And so uh, Lois, she worked very closely with Dr. Uh, Lynn Erickson, and she published a book about concepts in additional languages and for English uh, language learners. And she provides you with plenty of uh, bank of concepts and when you are looking at that, you are looking at the text form, you are looking at the text type, you are looking at the genre, you are looking at the uh, uh, figure de style, idiomatic expression, all those are, uh, are concepts, right, David, that they can use in the additional language. Would you like to explain more about this idea? Because I had plenty of those questions. Where do we find related concepts? Uh, how do we teach them? Uh, I know in the MYP, they give you them uh, clearly, and you have a fixed box of related concepts. In the PYP, we can create uh, or we can find our own. So, David, what is your perspective on that? Yeah, it is correct. And, and it's true that in MYP, we do receive every subject has these related concepts which are specific to the subject. And what they do is they bring depth to the key concepts which are more generic uh, for all the subjects. Uh, however, it is also true that the MYP doesn't force you to use any of those subjects. You can easily uh, adapt and create your own, depending on what you teach. Now, the question which just disappeared from my chat uh, is that it seems that you plan uh, a performance-based um, approach uh, when you try to say that you want the students to, why am I learning this? And, and I totally agree. This, it is a great way to approach your unit. I would like to know more about your units to see how the concepts can be used. Because basically, if you want to teach uh, why my students need to know that, what do I need to know these? That's a very general question. But in the explanation, I'm pretty sure that whatever your topic is, you can approach in the conceptual manner. Maybe you want to reflect on your real life type of teaching and then see what the topic is. So try to bring a different perspective. Instead of looking at your, your planning, maintain this planning that you have, this approach that you have, but try to bring the concepts in, your, in the topics that you're teaching. Because in one way or the other, you will have topics to teach. And, and, and that's probably the best way to do it. Uh, so the people of the Spanish are connecting and you can also connect with David. I know David is a Spanish speaker. So David, if you don't mind also putting your email in the chat so people, they can uh, connect with you if you would like uh, to make some connection. I did. My, my email is already there. So I've put it. I'm yeah. happy to collaborate with Oscar Bar Espanol. If you speak French, there's no problem. We can share it. And in English. That's it. So I'm really sorry so, for the rest. <laughs> I can do the French, I can do the English, and they can do the, the Arabic. So we can, uh, we can, and then we will leave you doing the Hindi, Mandarin, all the people based in Asia Pacific. Uh, yeah. You can connect uh, with each other. One more question, uh, David. How do you document student understandings of concept? We had a great session about assessment this morning. I'm not sure if you or you missed it, but then, uh, David, you can give also an idea. How do we document the understanding? Uh, I've seen many things. I've seen people assessing the concepts uh, with, with particular rubrics. They create their own rubrics, and when they have the summative tasks or the formative tasks, they can, they can just bring up some questioning, which is concept-oriented. And then what, in, instead of having a, a subject-specific question, it can be a question, imagine if we pick back again my concepts about this travel unit, and you want to discuss about, about point of view, then you maybe want to ask questions of the style of, um, uh, I don't know, have you ever traveled somewhere that made you uh, discover new things or change uh, your, your views of certain aspect? And have your students developing? And some of you will say, well, you know, I'm teaching phase one, phase two students. 
the language is not good enough to develop your ideas properly, maybe you want to use translanguaging. Maybe you want to give them the chance to answer the questions using bits of the target language, but based of their own language, because what you want is for them to show understanding of the concept. So I would say the best way to track the understanding of a concept will be by putting in your assessments concept specific questions where you want your students to consider and to reflect on the concept and not on the topic. I hope that helps. Okay, David, one more question. It's a PYP one, so if you don't mind, I can answer I can answer it. When planning, we should focus only on the language perspective of concept from the scope and sequence uh, from the IB documentation. Uh, it all depends on what kind of unit you are planning. If you are planning a transdisciplinary unit, so you are looking at the concepts from the different disciplines. If you are planning a standalone unit for additional language learners, then yes, you are picking related concepts coming from the uh, conceptual understanding, and that's how you develop your unit. Now, just to share with you, uh, my previous experience about additional languages at my previous school, David, we used to teach uh, English as a language of instruction, Spanish and Arabic for all our students as additional language or mother tongue. In the early years, all the students had the same lesson. We connect with all the units of inquiry of the class teacher. Now, in the primary, we used to divide our students based on their level. So mother tongue teacher students, they connect with the unit of inquiry of the homeroom teacher, but the additional language we used to develop for them standalone units, and we used to have only three standalone units per year. One is focusing on listening and speaking, one is focusing on reading and writing, and one is focusing on viewing and presenting. So you have different way of how you divide your curriculum, how you do your connection, and then the idea is once they reach the end of the primary, those students who've been learning Arabic or Spanish for five years, they can connect with the units of inquiry of the homeroom teacher. So I'm not going to tell a non-native speaker of Spanish, in grade five to speak about the human body and to speak about the earth space and universe if he is not able to do a presentation and so here grouping and regrouping your student is very important what do you think david yeah yeah absolutely i'm i'm fully agree that that that's very important i agree with you and uh, not much to add because you made it very clear ali so absolutely right yeah yeah okay yeah. david uh, people are asking again about your email so if you don't mind sharing it again and make sure you are sharing it to all panelists and attendees <laughs> yes i'm writing it right now is there ah no you shared it only with me so in the oh. chat box you are going to choose all oh, sorry, panelists yes. and attendees you're right you're right you're yeah that's why okay very good. So I'm going to say goodbye for all the people who are watching us on Facebook and I stop the live here now. For all the people who are still with us here in the chat, I would like again to thank you.